You better lose yourself in the music the moment you own it. You better never let it go. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. Cause opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Whoa. Wait a minute. I'm pretty sure Eminem's got that one wrong. Hey, I'm Lisa Robin Young and this is Creative Freedom. Your dose of education and inspiration to help creative entrepreneurs like you build a noble empire and live an inspired life without selling your soul. It's a phrase that's inspired fear in the hearts of millions of creatives over the years. You only get one chance to make a first impression and the corollary opportunity only knocks once. But today, I'm here to put your mind at ease because contrary to what you and Eminem might believe, opportunity is everywhere. The intention here is honorable, even though a bit misguided. An opportunity shouldn't be wasted, and when your moment comes, you need to be ready to shine. But not every opportunity is right for you, and every great idea you have isn't always meant for you to pursue, at least not right now. So what can you do? Here are my best tips to get you ready for the next time opportunity comes a knocking. One, know when to say no. Chaotic creatives can have hundreds, if not thousands, of great ideas. And if you invested time in pursuing every one of them, you'd be running around like a chicken with your head cut off, not getting very far on any of them. Some ideas land on your radar a little too soon or a little too late to pursue. In his book, Surge, author Mike Michalowicz talks about how surfers watch for the right wave to ride. They need to be in front of it. And if they chased every wave that looked good, They'd be paddling all over the water and they'd never get a chance to hang 10. So they have to learn to say no to the waves that are too far off or even the ones that are too close up because they can't get up on them. That's not to say that you should reject an opportunity just because you don't have a lot of time to prepare. I've auditioned for The Voice several times on very short notice and each time was a learning experience for me. But it's important to note that I didn't go into these auditions expecting to win. I went in. <laughs> expecting to beat my last performance, to improve myself. I saw these as opportunities to practice, not as my one big shot at stardom, ah, which, as I've said before, is a joke. There's no such thing as one big break. It's the accumulation of all the opportunities you've taken over time that open the doors for you. Like Richard Branson said, opportunities are like buses. There's always another one coming around the corner. And Sir Richard himself recognizes the importance of saying no to the opportunities that aren't right. Virgin has become a global powerhouse because they take the time to vet possible investment opportunities and take a pass on the opportunities that aren't in alignment with their goals, even if those opportunities could be lucrative for them. Two, know your end goal. Saying no all by itself won't help you strike gold on your creative path. It has to come with a focus on your end game. Why are you doing all this in the first place? Is it to spread a message, to fulfill a mission, or just to provide more for yourself and your family? Having an overarching goal makes it easier to say yes to the best opportunities and no to the ones that don't serve, no matter how attractive they might seem. One of my clients has an end goal of having a happy family. That means saying no to lots of travel saying no to intensive, demanding opportunities that take time away from her family. Could she do them? Sure. But should she? Not in light of what's really important to her. Keeping that end goal as her focus helps her make decisions that serve what's most important to her. Even if other people think she's nuts for turning them down, she knows that the best opportunities aren't always the ones that bring the most fame and fortune, but the ones that help her move closer to her ultimate goal, a happy family. I believe it was Master Wordsmith Marshall Mathers who said, success is my only mother fudge and option, failure's not. There is something like that. When you stay focused on success, as you define it, failure's not an option. You'll keep seeking new ways of achieving success. If you hit a wall, you'll look for a way around or find some dynamite or a shovel the point is, as long as you keep working toward it, you're bound to get closer to it. So keep working it. Anything else is just a distraction. Three, practice and hone your craft. It may seem obvious, 
but trying to wing it just doesn't get the job done. Sure, sometimes you can get away with it, but the more you practice, the more you hone your craft, the more prepared you'll be when your time to shine comes. When I was a junior high band student, we prepared relentlessly for our district and state competition. Our teacher not only made us memorize our music, she made us practice in total darkness. The band room was in the basement of the school and there were no windows and there was just this tiny little sliver of light that seeped in at the bottom of each of the doors and you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Miss Smith would have us turn our music stands around so that even that wouldn't help us. And then she'd turn off the light, count us off, and we'd start playing. The first few times were really stressful, but when we did it, it was amazing. And the lesson was important. Why did she make us play in the dark? Because she knew that if we knew the music with all of its nuances so well that we could play it in the dark, then we'd have no problem performing in front of our judges because they wouldn't even be on our radar. And if anything happened, like when the power went out in the auditorium one year, we would still be able to complete the performance and really wow the judges with our command of the music. That's the power of preparation. And you don't get there by winging it. And winging it is different than improvisation. Improv is a skill that comes out of preparation. You know your craft so well that you can make things up as you go along and keep it all together and maybe even make something even more incredible. Winging it comes from a lack of preparation and it leaves you looking unprepared, unprofessional, and unable to shine when the opportunity arises. It's the difference between what I create with Legos and what my 10-year-old can create. He has spent so many hours playing with these pieces that he can see possibilities in his mind that I can't. And he can conjure some pretty amazing creations while my stuff still looks poorly cobbled together no matter how hard I try. Even Eminem recognizes the power of practice. I've been chewed up and spit out and moved off stage But I kept priming and step right in the next cipher Best believe somebody's paying the pod piper So no, there's no such thing as one shot at success. Opportunities come around all the time. And sometimes you can create your own opportunities. How? That's another episode all unto itself. So now let me hear from you. What are you doing to hone your craft and prepare yourself for the next time opportunity knocks? What's your end goal? What inspires you to bring your great work into the world? What do you need to say no to so that you can keep stepping toward that goal? Share your thoughts and ideas in the comments and let's be a rising tide for everyone. If you liked this episode and wanna be the first to get more just like it, then subscribe and share me around with your friends because sometimes you feel like a nut and sometimes you don't. Hey. And there's always more where this came from. Got a question you'd like to see answered in a future episode? Hit me up for inspiring songs, stories, and resources to help you build a noble empire and live an inspired life without selling your soul. Come see what's shaken over at lisarobinyoung.com. You know you want to.